This is the type of film that if you saw at a film festival, you would have gone home delightfully surprised and you would be telling everyone how brutal, gory, and wonderful this movie is. Now if you're the person that's being told this and you've really heard a lot of hype going on for this film and then you go see it when it's already out in like a thousand theaters, then you're going to say to yourself, I mean, the gore was cool and everything, but it's a pretty unoriginal film and it's kind of ridiculous at the same time. How important is it to manage our expectations? I mean, at one end you can watch this film and it would be amazing. And then you can watch it from the other spectrum and be like, eh. Frontiers, from director Xavier Jens, is about a gang of young thieves who flee Paris during the violent aftermath of a political election, only to hole up at an inn ran by neo-Nazis. I love the energy of this opening. It's got that frenetic camera moving that comes out anytime there's bullets whizzing by you and people running everywhere and people just scrambling for their lives and at the same time trying to make a point, but it's just chaos. I love that stuff. You got reporters there and you're trying to get everything on camera, but at the same time, you kind of want to stick with your life and you kind of like not being dead. So everything is all over with the camera work, but you got to get the shot. It's got quick editing, chaos of the characters in action, some looting, fires and garbage cans because there's always fires and garbage cans. It just kind of works for these sorts of riots. The authorities trying to hold their ground with SWAT and they got the big masks and they got the shields and just the black armor. And it's got some 28 days later opening vibes mixed with a little bit of that newscast footage. Mixed with real life, mixed with the sound of static going everywhere. Frontiers is like a hilly adventure. It goes way up in terms of energy and craziness, and then it goes way down, and then it goes way up, and then it goes way down, and it goes way up, and then way down. But the camera doesn't necessarily know this at times, because there are soft, small moments in this film that should be really relaxed and it's just not. However, at certain times, it feels like the director didn't tell the cameraman to stop shaking the camera because there are moments that are down moments. A little bit of relax. You gotta really recuperate. And the cameraman just didn't realize that apparently. There's one shot where the thieves are exiting their car and there's nothing going on. It's a very relaxed moment. And the camera is literally moving like this. It's insane. And the whole shot is just like an exterior shot of people getting out of a car. One second and it's like, whoo. calm down bro. Calm down. Literally like a grenade went off next to the tripod. In the end, anything creative comes down to the director. And for the coloring, I had an issue with this one as well. There was some really weird night coloring moments. I'm not sure if they just shot day for night and then tried to fix it in post, but the coloring is abysmal for those night scenes outside. It has like this weird blue film over it and it's not like, cool blue tones, like light cool blue tones. It is harsh blue, but like you don't really know if it's night or not, or day, or dusk, or dawn. It's just a very bizarre color and it does not work. You know those movies where it's like nighttime and they're shooting a scene where someone is sleeping in the bed and it is so overly bright and blue as if that's what it looks like when people go to bed? It's worse than that. Again, if it was a money issue and they couldn't shoot at night because that does get ridiculously expensive and it really messes with the production, I can get them shooting day for night, but you gotta figure out how to work that coloring if you're gonna shoot day for night. I mean, come on. And it's one thing if you're going stylistically for something like this. I mean, look at NWR and Neon Demon or you know any film he does, and it's a very specific style of lighting, not necessarily the coloring, but this one, I don't feel like they were going for it, and if they were, that tone does not match the rest of the day and the rest of this movie. If there's one thing you should learn about horror movies, and we should learn plenty of things from horror movies, but anytime you go off the beaten path and stay at a hotel, motel, inn, bed and breakfast, something that's kind of really excluded from the rest of the world, beware. You don't know who's out there. You don't know what type of clientele is there. You don't know the type of person who runs these places. Beware. Airbnb, beware. Make smart choices, characters in horror movies. Make smart choices. Now let's talk about family. 
because there's a lot of family dynamics going on here. You got a pregnant woman who still seems to be considering whether or not she should have the baby that is inside her belly. You got a brother who wants to see the child born. You got the soon to be father who may or may not want to be the father. And then you got a strange family of neo-Nazis and families within families within families. The family themes in this film are strong. And yet Frontiers doesn't overly seem like a movie that really has nice things to say about family. Quite the opposite in fact. The film is so brutal towards family and these themes that you kind of feel like, damn, I think this writer or this director definitely got abused when he was a kid and had a really shitty childhood. A bit of the unoriginality really comes through here in these themes and in some of these sequences. You got a lot of The Hills Have Eyes and you got a lot of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. And it's really interesting. Someone can see a movie and say to themselves, wow, those were really great homages that this film made towards some of the classics. And yet other people can see the same film and say, I can't believe they did such a ripoff of the classic films. There's such a fine line that creators can go over or stay just nicely under where it's an homage, but then you cross that line just a little bit and it's a ripoff of unoriginality. These neo-Nazis though, am I right? Sometimes you get the feeling of Stockholm Syndrome from some of these family members and then other times you get the feeling that they really hate each other. And then you think to yourself, well if you hate it so much, why don't you just leave? There's a ton of guns there. It would be very easy to just exit, trust me. Just pull a no country for old men and go about your business. Leave. Family and love and hate, these are tricky things. Another theme that's really prevalent in this is revolution and war and politics. You have the riots in Paris due to the election that really kickstarts the film. And then the thieves find themselves surrounded by the most psychotic politics of all time. There's definitely a political statement being done here, but unfortunately I don't really know what it is because I don't know the feel of the socio-political climate in France in 2008. So it's hard for me to make those sort of parallels. Bottom line, if you want a film that has crazy amounts of energy, crazy amounts of blood, crazy amounts of kills, crazy amounts of creative kills, then you should go see this movie. It's also got a ton of weird characters and I do enjoy a good weird character or two. So go enjoy the bloodbath.